There's a common thought fallacy regarding the search for extraterrestrial life, and I've been guilty of propagating it. It's the notion that we've been searching the skies for radio signals for over 40 years and still nothing. Either alien life is extremely rare, or they are all radio silent. Maybe it's time to pack up all the radio telescopes and focus on other means of detection. A recent leak from the scientific community hints that this belief is about to be shattered. Usually, 40 years of no results is more than enough to throw in the towel. You might be considered crazy if you didn't. But things at astronomical scales don't follow our normal intuition. If the space around us is like the ocean, then by 2016, we had searched just one bathtub's worth of space for extraterrestrial signals. That year, the Breakthrough Listen program was launched. This well-funded private program claimed it could cover 10 times more of the sky than previous programs, at least five times more of the radio spectrum, and do it all a hundred times faster. This would essentially allow it to search a bathtub's worth of space, the equivalent of all the searching ever done before the project, in one day. Still, the search is an uphill battle. The ocean of space is vast. Even if we are searching on volumes of scales of swimming pools instead of bathtubs, a complete search seems eons away. But that doesn't mean listening is pointless. We recently learned that after three years of nothing, the Breakthrough Listen Project started to hear a signal. Normally, these signals are quickly explained away as interference from Earth or other natural phenomena. But over a year later, there is still no natural explanation for this signal. In fact, Breakthrough Listen has been keeping this signal under wraps and has yet to publicly announce it. Keeping such a signal secret must have been tough. And earlier this month, it was leaked to The Guardian and later confirmed by Scientific American, amongst other outlets. The possibility of earthbound interference or a hoax causing this signal still exists and Reporting on the subject is quick to point this out. But all the facts that we know indicate that this is a true extraterrestrial signal. It was a narrowband signal at exactly 982.002 MHz. There's nothing we know of that could have naturally created such a signal. Additionally, these frequencies pass through most mediums easily and the cosmos are generally quiet around these frequencies, making it ideal for interstellar communication. These ranges are not often used on Earth either, making human interference seem unlikely. What makes this signal even more exciting though, is where it was coming from. Literally the closest star to us. Proxima Centauri. Although our closest neighbor at around four light years away, it is too dim to be seen by the naked eye, a red dwarf star. Breakthrough Listen was taking another look at the star when the signal began. By aiming the dish away and back, scientists are able to tell that the signal was indeed coming from the star and not a geostational satellite. Even more compelling, the slight Doppler shift of the signal indicated that it wasn't coming directly from Proxima Centauri, but rather something orbiting the star potentially, from a planet. And we know that Proxima Centauri has planets, at least two of them. One of them, Proxima Centauri b, has an Earth-like density and orbits within the Goldilocks habitable zone of its star. It's really almost unbelievable how many things line up with this signal. Of course, it's good to hedge one's excitement until the official paper on it comes out but it seems like this might be the real deal. If you're still doubtful about the significance of this signal, I suggest you listen to this great interview with Jason Wright, a professor of astronomy and astrophysics at Penn State. He discusses the specifics of what we know about the signal, and his excitement is palpable. Perhaps the strangest thing that we know about this signal was that it was only detected intermittently for about three hours during 30 hours of observation in April and May of 2019. If 
there was a civilization similar to us on Proxima Centauri b, we'd expect to hear a constant hum of stray signals from things like aircraft radar and other broadcasts. Life would have evolved much differently in the Proxima Centauri system, though. And our intuition likely does not hold up. Although 1,000 times dimmer than our sun, Proxima Centauri b orbits Proxima Centauri 20 times closer than we orbit the sun. And this works out for the most part. Even if tidally locked, surface temperatures there would be amenable to liquid water and life as we know it. But Proxima Centauri has a wild streak. Although it's much less powerful overall than our sun, it produces occasional flares where X-rays and other emissions reach the level of our sun. This would wreak havoc on planets as close as Proxima Centauri b. It's possible that a very strong planetary magnetic field could mitigate some of this harm, but this solar activity would likely strip away atmosphere and irradiate any life it came across. Perhaps, though, life still might exist in these conditions. Some have hypothesized that underground life might flourish in such a world. Common extinction events could even drive evolution in ways we can't imagine. So, were these signals from an underground civilization peering out into space before quickly receding back to digest their new information? Could the timing of these messages be encoding some sort of information? Or is this planetary system devoid of life, but ripe with intergalactic technology? A relay station, so to speak. We may never know, unless we ask them. Assuming they are there, actively listening, able to understand and willing to respond, all big ifs, we'd hear back from them eight years after beaming our questions away. The sad and frustrating part of this story is that we've already stopped listening. SETI programs are viewed as frivolous by most governments and receive little to no public funding. Breakthrough Listen was funded by a private individual, Yuri Milner, and will have completed its course six years from now. Other major SETI initiatives are also privately funded, such as the Allen Telescope Array. This grand vision of 350 radio telescopes never fully materialized, although 42 of them were built and are doing good work. These efforts are commendable, but they are minuscule compared to what a serious, well-funded government program could accomplish. We found potential signs of microscopic life in our nearest planets. Now, we found a sign of a technological civilization in our nearest star system. And we're still not even constantly tuning in to that star. After the 30 hours observing Proxima Centauri in April and May of 2019, the Parkes Telescope is on to observing other wonders of the universe. If this signal was part of a larger encoded message, we'd be completely unaware. Signals like this might be common throughout the universe, but due to timing and lack of resources, we may be missing these galactic memos. If all we've been hearing about these signals is true, this may very well be the confirmation of technological alien life, and the discoverers would likely win the Nobel Prize. Hopefully, such an event would change the public's perception of SETI from a pointless waste of money to one of the most important endeavors of humankind. At the very least, we need to be keeping a constant ear to our closest neighbor. Who knows what secrets they might tell. Of course, there's still much we don't know. Maybe the search strategy for Breakthrough Listen changed based on this, and they actually are constantly observing this star now. What do you think? Do you remain skeptical of this signal, or are you as convinced as I am that there's something here? What are your theories for what kind of civilization might have created these signals? We'll get the full story when the official paper is published, and I'll be here then with a follow-up. Until then, I'll be continuing to investigate and address all things strange and otherworldly. I hope you subscribe and join me next time. And thanks for watching Rather Be Squidding. <laughs>